please go ahead. Um, I'm uh, looking for paper towels that don't have a pattern on them. Um, okay. Um, my favorite paper towels in a roll that don't have a pattern that I really like to use in the studio, not for my hands, for painting and blobbing paint and all that, are Viva. Um, Viva. Okay. Viva. And you can use them over and over until they are a little painted mess. And then I throw them out. So that's my favorite ones that are in a roll. My fav my everyday paper towels that I use in the studio are these. I buy them at Costco and they're made by Scott and they're just called multi-fold towels. And, okay. um, and that's what I use. I just take a, a whole bunch of them and they're not expensive. They're great. I keep them in a basket. I just grab a handful out. And my other question is, um, if you use orange, is there a transparent orange that yes. you recommend? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's two transparent oranges that I love. Um, one is Windsor orange. Um, and uh, I, if you really want a yummy, yummy, bright, great color, uh, look at Holbein. Um, other, com other companies make Windsor orange. Um, but I really like the Holbein one. The okay. um, other one to look at is American Journey has an orange called Halloween. The Halloween <laughs> orange and, and, the, and American Journey is the brand that is made for Cheap Joe's, but it's made by one of these companies. So they are good quality paint. You also get a very big tube for a reasonable amount of money. Um, their Halloween orange is a little bit yellower than the Windsor, um, but it's still a, a really good orange. So those are the two that I would recommend. Thanks so much. All right. So good morning, everybody. Um, good morning, Marge. Nice to see you. <laughs> Today we are going to paint a picture, or how to paint a picture. So, um, so the way this workshop is going to work, like the others, we're going to uh, start with a PowerPoint. We're going to go through a few exercises, um, and then you are going to put together your own painting, and that's what this is about what to do, how you would paint a painting if you didn't have me next to you, whispering in your ear. Um, and that's what I want for you is so that you could paint anything you want. Um, uh, and that's what we're gonna work on today. So what do you need? You need some paint, your paints, less important about the colors today because we're mostly working on the structure of the painting. You need some brushes, uh, a pencil and eraser, uh, the water and the paper towels. You need practice paper. We definitely need practice paper. We need one sheet of good paper for your good painting. You will need a Sharpie marker uh, or any black marker and the copies of the photos I sent. All right, so uh, while anybody is running off to get something they forgot, um, uh, this is the point I do my little commercial. Most of you know this already. And um, the list is in chat. And I see Brian also put up a link to my website for anyone who wants to jump on right away. So I've started rolling out the watercolor 201 classes. So we're going to have one on adding texture on March 8th, which is so much fun. I mean, there's so many ways to add texture. We're going to do them all. Um, and as I say, we're, we're a good smock or clothes. You don't care about that day. Um, negative painting. I love negative painting. That's on March 22nd. 
And I once had a teacher that said every good watercolor should have a place where you have some negative painting. So let's look at negative painting. Um, the free painting workshop, as I said, is this Thursday evening. Uh, I know some of you are in it. Um, if you're not and you want to join, um, uh, just follow the link to um, the Caldwell Librarian, and she's doing all the registration. You do not have to live in Caldwell to register. Um, and we hold these uh, several times a year. I, I teach for them. Uh, two in-person workshops. Uh, at the Land Grove. So this May, Shake It Up, Art and Yoga, May 20th to 22nd. It's like a, a long weekend. Um, uh, and uh, then July 18th to 21st um, is going to be watercolor. And that one's just me. Um, so that is what is coming up. Commercial is over. And let's go to our PowerPoint. So I am going to share my screen to pull my glasses down so I can see. <laughs> okay, let's go to slideshow. Okay. All right. So how to paint a picture. As much as I would always love to be with you, anytime you paint, we know that's not going to happen, that there will be times you're gonna be painting on your own and that's as it should be. So you're ready to paint. Here's the hard part. What are you going to paint? You know, you have decided, you took some of my classes, you got out everything and you're thinking, oh God, what am I going to paint? And even a little piece of paper starts looking like a whole lot of real estate to fill in. Um, very few people just start throwing paint on paper. Most people have an idea of where they're going. Most artists, um, plan it or map it before they would do a painting. And that's what we're going to talk about, how to do that. Um, and most artists either work from drawings or photos. So, and a lot of the drawings come from photos. So, you know, you've been somewhere really pretty and you took pictures and you say, oh, this is going to make the best painting. Um, and I'm going to turn it into a painting one day. Or, you're just somewhere that you go to every day, like this farmer's market. And I, I was looking at all the spices and nuts and stuff. And I said, oh, wouldn't this be a fun painting? Um, so I took a painting of this. So there's potential all over the place. Um, the, also a supermarket painting. Um, it's amazing where you get your inspiration from. But the idea is where do you start? What photos make a good painting, make the best um, inspiration for your painting? And uh, that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna look at first. So um, first point, working from photos is totally legitimate. I know there are people that say, no, 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 you cannot paint from a photograph, wrong. The photograph should be either taken by you or you have to have permission to use it if it's not yours. Um, uh, and you wanna treat the photo like reference only. That means you're not copying every single little flower and weed and you know making the clouds exact. You don't need to, you have the photograph. This is your reaction, you the artist. How are you putting yourself into this photograph? What parts of it are important to you? And it becomes your place. It becomes Ellen Land and Helen Land and Kit Land. And that means you can move things around. You can decide, you know what? I think I'd like pink flowers in the front or I wanna put a person on the side. Um, and that's, whoops, someone's coming in. Um, and, and that's, um, you have the freedom to do that. 
The photograph is reference only. All right, so what makes a good photograph for reference? Okay, the first thing is it has to have good lighting. So this is a photograph with bad lighting. I actually went on the internet to look at photographs that weren't good. So th this is photograph with bad lighting. Could be beautiful, but why would you start with something that is, is already having so many problems? Make sure your photos have good lighting. Make sure your photos aren't out of focus. Um, uh, if it's reference, you got to see it, you know, especially if that's the item you want, you want to focus on. So no blurry photographs that that doesn't work. It's not going to help you paint it. All right. The next thing, when you're using a photo for reference, it's got to have a focus, it's got to have a center of interest. And this does not, this just has grass. That This was a very hard one to find actually. I was very pleased when I found this photo. Um, now the perspective of the camera is different than the perspective of your eye. And sometimes the camera will do things that will sort of trick you a bit. You wanna make sure you're not painting any of these tricks. Um, and uh, some of these lines were, you know, it like wasn't clear what's in front of other things. And so that's why I put this one in. It's not a great example of that, but there's, you, you just wanna be very um, conscious of that. Oh, and last, uh, this is funny. So people do this all the time. They, the, the camera um, in terms of depth and size can be used to exaggerate things. Um, you don't need that for your, you don't wanna paint that into your painting. So you wanna be very aware. People do that where they're holding up their fingers or they're pushing the, the uh, leaning tower pizza back or that kind of thing. But um, all right, and lastly, when you have a photo about something, you want to use it as reference, you know, focus on that piece you want to use as reference. So this, you know, the dog is great, but there's a whole lot of stuff that's not dog. So don't don't uh, trouble your eye with things that aren't useful for you. Okay, so now you have your reference photo and you wanna figure out, how am I gonna put this into a painting? Well, that's called composition. Composition is layout or the arrangement of the elements in your painting. So here we've got sky, water, land, boats, and a little house. Um, where you put them and how you arrange them is the composition. And there are certain ways that it will be more likely that you will have a good outcome. So um, you may want to consider the main elements in your in your painting. So an element is a shape. Um, in this case, we have mountains, sky, trees, and a roadway. Now, um, how you put them together is going to give an overall feeling of how the viewer is going to um, uh, approach your painting. Uh, do you want your painting to be soothing? Do you want your painting to be energizing or disorienting? Um, and how do you want your viewer to relate to your painting? In this case, I made the road come right out to the bottom of the painting. I'm inviting the viewer in. Sometimes we don't invite the viewer in. Sometimes there's, there's an obstacle at the bottom. And we're saying, you can look, but you can't come in. 
And that's a, another feeling. So, um, so when you're laying this out, you're, it's, it's more than just where the elements are. You're saying lots of things. All right, these are the principles of design. And I know anybody who's taken an Art 101 class has seen these, it's all ho-hum, so I'm not gonna go into each one of them this way. We're gonna do it very, very easily. So this is balance. Balance is when the visual weight on one side is similar to the visual weight on the other side. So in this case, it's top and bottom. And when you have visual symmetry, you have a feeling of calmness, peace, balance. This is contrast. I, I love this. The, the line of people is covering where I have the, the name. Uh, okay, contrast can be a lot of things. It can be lights and darks. It can, like in this picture, it can be sizes, small things to big things. Um, and, um, and in this case, it's, uh, we have darks and lights in, interspersing. So we have some contrast. Okay, emphasis. Now, emphasis is the word we, um, you've heard me call it the focus or the focal point. Every painting needs to be about something. There's a reason you want to paint it. And that's the reason. So you're giving me information, you're giving me a route, and the focus is, is the, the big deal about the painting. Um, it's what the viewers are going to be looking at. So um, there's a lot of ways to show a focus, a lot of play. And we're going to look in a minute at where you put the focus. But in this case, the focus is the yellow flowers, the yellow over here to the side. And you're, you'll see why it's the focus in a bit. Okay, this one is movement. Movement is how your viewer's eye goes through your painting. So you're inviting the viewer in or not, and the eye will go down a path, in this case, the water, but you've got little clues. You've got little ways you're ha having your viewer move around. Um, a lot of times it's with diagonals. So it could be branches leaning that act as arrows. It could be a diagonal along the side of the mountain. And it brings you all to the focus, which is the end of the water. Pattern. Um, this has to do with repetition. So when you repeat something and how you repeat it. So in this case, yes, the pink trees are repeated. So the ones cl closer are darker and have more detail. And as they move away, the darks are dropping off. The sizes are getting smaller. There's also pattern with the tree trunks and with the shadows. And what happens is as it moves away, the space between them gets smaller. It, 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 uh, and, and pattern very often gives you depth in a picture. So you could also see the, the patterns repeating with the shadows and how the shadow colors change depending on where it hits. So this is pattern. Okay, rhythm. Rhythm is really hard to explain. It, I like to think of it like a heartbeat. If you're looking at a painting, um, when you go from thing to thing, is it like a drum beat, like ba bum ba bum um, Do you have that, that uh, uh, the, the regular lines, the regular, um, a dropping in of color or shape that gives you 
some kind of, um, of, of artistic heartbeat. Um, and lastly, unity, you got to throw it all together. So um, you want to have the whole thing look like it's one painting. Um, does any one element stick out? Um, is there balance? Is it giving the feeling you want? If you were going for a calmness or a disorientation, you want your viewer to, to be off balance when they look at your picture, which sometimes you do. Um, did, you, did you do what you wanted? Um, and I know that's a lot. And you're not going to use all of those things in one picture. You're just not. It, that doesn't happen. Okay. But you do need a focus. Um, where do you put your focus? This is called the rule of thirds. A lot of you have heard of this already. You basically take a tic-tac-toe board. You put it over your photo or over your uh, painting. And what I care about are where these lines intersect. Those are the sweet spots. And those are the perfect places for a focus, for your center of interest. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have a center of interest that's uh, somewhere else, but those, those are the best spots for it. Basically, off center, up or down. That's really what it is. Now, there's a couple other little rules. The rule of odds, meaning if you're going to paint uh, something, use an odd number. Um, we don't want just one. That becomes dead center. And we don't want two. That's the ping pong ball effect. And it, there's two symmetrical. We want an odd number because we're always looking for asymmetry in art. Now, your first decision you're going to make, you have your photo you're going to use. You thought, now I know what I want for the focus. I'm going to focus in on this or that in my picture. So your very first decision is, how am I going to hold my paper? And that will um, affect your composition. So there's two ways to hold the paper when it's rectangular, and that is long ways, uh, which is called portrait style, or uh, wider, which is called landscape style. And it does not mean you can't do a landscape on a more vertical piece, and it does not mean you can't do a portrait on a more uh, horizontal piece. You can. These are just the names of it. Now, when you decide where, how you're going to hold your picture, the next thing is find your centers. I always have my students do this, and we're going to do it today. I call them halfway tick marks. And you want to put them on all four sides because we always want to know where our halfway points are. And we're doing this so we don't inadvertently slice up our picture halfway. We, we don't want to make that mistake um, by doing that. Now, what happens if we do that? So here is one, we have, a, you know, little cottages on water. And oh my God, I made the horizon, the top of the water right in half. So what I have is totally symmetrical at the top to the bottom. Um, and that we don't want. I know we want visual balance. We don't want to cut it in half. We don't want to look like we just glued, you know, two copies of it together. Now, when you're doing a landscape, like we're going to be laying out today, um, usually there's three major components. Um, we have sky, we have middle ground, although middle ground and foreground can be made up of elements, but, but it's sky, middle ground, and foreground. And you can divide them into equal thirds if you want. There's no question. But usually we don't. 
usually we either um, have it where the sky has most of the space and then our middle ground and foreground um, have the bottom third um, or the other way around. Now, why would we care about doing it that way? When the sky has most of the space, maybe it's a special sky, maybe it's a sunset or just rain clouds coming in and, and it's really terrific. And then you keep your landscape a little bit simpler. Um, also a big sky shows an expansiveness for your landscape. And that's really, that's important in some of these paintings. You know, maybe you have mountains or big elements and you want that expansiveness. You want it to look like it's part of things that are so much bigger. Um, but sometimes we're focused on what's right there, either in the foreground or in the middle ground, where, where uh, we put a lot of detail into uh, the land or the water or the buildings or people or whatever. And we don't need that much sky. Sometimes there's no sky. A few of my paintings I showed you have no sky. You know there's a sky, but I didn't need to put it in. Um, so in that case, the land is, is taking up most of the real estate. And you can see I'm being very careful not to make that, that horizon line at the halfway point. I don't want to divide it. Okay. Now, we talked about this a teeny bit, but if you're painting one thing, don't put it in the center. This is dead center. And really, there's nowhere to go from here. You know, you can add whatever you want to it and it's still going to be dead center. So you kind of boxed yourself in. This is when there's two <laughs> things and they don't have to be identical. They have to be um, visually the weight of it identical. So it's two different trees. They're about the same size. They're located in approximately the same depth back and same thing. Where are you going with this? It's, it, it's just... It, it, it's, it's divided your paper. So we don't want to do that. Now, paintings typically have four to seven elements in them. Um, although this one has a few more because I was trying to prove a point. So we have a sky, we have a mountain, we have a big tree, we have some small trees, a road, bush, a house, a fence, and some grass. All right. And whenever you've got multiple elements, even if it's a banana, an apple, and a pear, you always want to overlap. Overlap is really, really important. It's a way for the elements to relate to each other. It's an easy way to show depth. Um, and it's a, a wonderful way to show movement. Because when you overlap, something's in front, something's in back and your eyes starts following. So here, very few things are overlapped. These are just existing separate from each other. So what happens if we overlap them? See the difference? Here's where now we have overlap and we've got, oh, let me see, the, the line is still there. So we've got the tree reaching up and touching the sky. We've got, uh, let me go back because everybody's blocked by it. We have these smaller trees blocking part of the house, but that's okay. But now they're touching the sky. We have the grass now in front of the road. We have the fence now in front of the tree. You can do this because it's your world. You can move these elements. And that's the point of this. Even if the photo showed it like this, it's your photo, it's just reference. Make them relate to each other, make them overlap. That's important. 
Okay, one more little rule you want to remember when you're putting your compositions together, and I don't know if I did it well enough here, and it's called the no kissing rule. So it means you don't want anything to meet at one point, either in your picture or at the edge of your picture. <laughs> so this is the trees are kissing the branches. So how do you fix it? You either pull them down or you push them up in front. And people tend to kiss on the edge of a paper on the edge of the paper. Um, I see that all the time. They mean they start the tree, or they start the house, and it it hits it in the one point, and either pull it into your paper more or push it off your paper. Let it go off. Do you, you see part of it? Let it go off. And that becomes a more exciting composition. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by kissing. You know what? Let me, when we're using the paper, that was, Rosemary, was that you that asked? No, no. Robin. No, it was Robin. Robin. Thank you. Robin, we're going to be on paper shortly. Can I answer your question then? Sure, of course. Okay, I will show <laughs> more, you exactly. Marcy, um, Marcy. Mar yes. Can you, can you back up one and, slide? Uh, back up a slide? Maybe, yeah, go back to the kissing. Yeah, yeah I, okay. I think I, I think I've got to show you with the paper. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let me show you with the paper. I I, yep. I think this slide isn't isn't clear enough. Yes. I really should replace it. Um, uh, which we're going to do in a moment anyway. Now, there's lots of these things out there on the internet, compositional guides. So now you've got your photo so that you only have use, one you know what one you want to paint. <laughs> and this gives you um, yeah. options for how to put it together. This is crazy. This is like too many options. So what I did is I looked at the three uh, ones that, that we mostly use. So one is an S composition. So you can see the sky is small, the land is higher, but we've got the S, the S is the road. It's really nice to have a good diagonal in your composition. It's a great way to bring someone in to give interest and to give movement. Um, so that's, that's a great one to, to lean on. Um, the cross composition, it does not have to be in the middle. Um, so here I pushed the horizontal line down and the vertical line off to the side, which you would want to do. And you could, that could be the beginning of a landscape. We could add water, buildings, people, more trees, um, other, other vegetation. And it still is a cross composition because the strongest elements are the verticals against the horizontal. And the last one is the L. Um, and it could be a regular L or a backwards L. Um, and once again, you've got the bigger sky with the, with the, uh, the lowered horizon. Um, and that's an L composition. So these are the, the three that we use the most um, when we're doing this. Um, okay, so what we are going to do, usually you start with the photo. This is one I took with my daughter this summer. We were going for a walk and we saw this old barn falling down and I was all excited about this. Then I did a couple drawings to decide how I'm gonna use it. You can see it's different. I moved it around um, and then it became a painting. So, um, so that this is the process I wanna take you through. And we're going to do this a couple ways. So I am going to end this and stop sharing. Hello, everybody. Um, 
Okay, so now, um, any questions about the PowerPoint before we go to our paper? Let's go to paper. Okay, so I am going to change cameras and enlarge this. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's move this. And let's go to the practice stuff. So I sent you some uh, photos. Let's go to fix photo number one. Fix photo number one. Everybody's got a copy of this. Mm -hmm. All right. So you went on a trip. You came home with this, but you loved it. What's wrong with it? What, what was wrong with this picture? Why aren't you going to use it the way it is? It's out of focus. It's not it's very out clear. of focus. What else? It looks it's lumpy. lumpy. <laughs> okay. Boring. Talk about the lumps. That you, 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 that's exactly right. Where are the lumps? In the middle. Many, in the yeah. middle. Thank you. Everything okay. is in the middle. Yeah. Everything is centered right smack in the middle. We didn't want that. Okay. Except for the tree. <laughs> and Except then the, for tree the tree. Looks, but what could we close. do? Okay. So what could we do to make this better? All right. Flatten you the lump. Decide. You've got <laughs> your paper. And now... Um, you know what? I'm going to use the Sharpie so you can see. You could do Sharpie also if you'd like. And we're just going to make a small box. A small box? Small box. That's okay. it's a small box. Here's my hand. So it's just a small box. Okay. How can we make this better? Get rid of the lumps. Get rid of the lumps. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make my halfway tick marks. Where am I going to put my horizon? One third down. One third Two. down, so we're mostly- No, 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 I mean that one third from the bottom. One third from Two the bottom, down. okay. Yeah. And yeah. what do we want to do about the lumps? Put it on so a diagonal. Great. Great. Move them out. Move diagonal? them out, make them straight. Straighten it, straight. make them straight. Diagonal. Tell me, wait, Kit, what are you saying? Say it again. Straighten it. Straighten it. We could yeah. straighten it. We actually no, could. Diagonal, diagonal. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I could do something like that. Yeah. When right. you're doing something that's on a diagonal, I want to make sure that where it, it, it is on this side is different to where it is on this side. I always want to make sure they're not entering and exiting at the same point. Okay, what do I do about the water line? Where does that go? In the middle. Mm -hmm. Well, if I do it in the middle, I'm mm -hmm. going right across my horizon. Yeah. And that water line is going to be my horizon. So it's going to be either below it or above it. Above it. Above it. Oh. Above it? Okay, yeah. let's do it. Now, water is the only line that has to be straight. Oh, okay. Ever. And, and it's only if it's flat water. Um, okay, we've got some mountains. Now, these mountains but Mark, kind of end right in the middle. What should we do about that? Move them around. Move them around. Okay, is all right. So let's move them around. Where do I want my focus to be? Because that's going to be where the, the mountains are too. But I kind of like the way they come together in the middle, which becomes the focus point. Well, I we do could like do the way that, that they... but I think yeah. what I'm going to do is just take it off oh. center. Yeah. Oh. So okay. now I'm not right in the center, I'm off yeah. center. I see. Uh -huh. uh, and then I've got this tree. Now, I happen yeah. to like the tree. I think this, this composition could use a good vertical. But what should I do to make the tree better? What do you think? Bring Focus it up to the bottom. 
Focus Say it, it again. The, bring it up focus to the Focus it on the bottom. Yeah. Focus bottom. it on the bottom. Yes, yeah, make the front come down to the bottom, maybe. Um, bring it up to the sky. Yes, bring it up to the sky. Okay. okay. Right. I want my tree to overlap lots of stuff. Okay. And if my tree is big, here, I'll okay. fill this in. Um, if my tree is big, I'm putting a lot of depth in this picture. And now I've created a visual diagonal that somebody will enter here and will go up here. And I can even make them go up there even more. I could add some grasses, the tallest one bending toward my focus. Margie, can we go back to the straight line of the water? Because in your picture, this, actually the land, uh, yeah, the, the land <laughs> in the photo, in the photo the, on the right. Yes. The land, um, the land um, angles. You're right. You are 100% right. Into the distance. You are 100% right, Helen. So. All right, so here is the front line. Now, Helen brought up a good point that what we have here is this kind of thing. And now the land comes out and then the land comes out again. And then here we have the land going this way and then maybe this way and this way. You end up with these like, like soft Zs. Mm -hmm. Um, and that gives you the ability to have the water go back. So you could have it do that. And that is more interesting. There's no question. You know, even though, it's, even I, though the, it's right in the center. Well, I shouldn't have put it quite in the center. I okay. should have moved it over okay. a little bit. You're right. Okay. Um, but, and I can still have my tree, but I should have, I should have kicked it over a little bit. You are hundred percent right. So kick it over. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Well done. There it is. <laughs> well done. Yeah. That That's right. That's right. That's so funny. All right. Let's try this again. All right. Go to fix photo number two. All right. So now we've got Lighthouse. You all have wonderful pictures of a lighthouse and a great sky, by the way. This is a fabulous sky for painting. Mm -hmm. um, but what's wrong with this picture? It's in the middle. The lighthouse. The lighthouse. You're all right. You're a hundred percent right. Let's make it better. So first question, how are we holding our paper? Vertical or, or landscape style? I'd rather uh, vertical. vertical. Well, uh, what was it? Say it again. I would rather vertical. You would rather vertical. How many want vertical? Okay. How many want landscape? Landscape. Yeah. Landscape. All right, you know what? Let's try it both ways. Yeah. All right, so let's make two boxes. Do this with me. So we have one box going this way. We're going to do it vertical first, and then we'll do uh, landscape after. Okay. All right. So I've got a pier. I've got the, the lighthouse. I've got a bunch of stuff. I don't even know what that is. I've got reflections and I've clouds. All right, so I wanna put in my halfway tick marks. Where am I putting my horizon? Hmm. Hmm. Forward down. Just I'm sorry, down. say it again. Down. Further down, yes, I think I would. I think I would put it further down. Okay. So let's say this 
becomes part of that peer and here's where some of that stuff is. I'll just call it stuff. Now, if I'm doing this, I'm going to have less of a reflection. Right. If I did it so that, let's stay in camera. So if I want my, I want this to be more about the reflection, I'm going to move, I would move it up or even, well, no, I wouldn't put it above that. I don't think, I, I don't think I have enough if I'm going vertically, but I, I would put it up higher. So, so it, it's two different paintings, depending on where you put, how you start putting your elements. Okay, mm -hmm. now I've got this lighthouse. Where is the lighthouse going? Toward the right. Toward the right. Toward the right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who said that? I do. Thank you. Excellent. Toward the right. So, okay, here's my lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, my lighthouse has to have a reflection right under it. So, what happens to my reflection? It wiggles. Bends. It's going to wiggle. I don't like that it bend that it bends quite so much at the end, but right. I'm going to have this reflection go right off the page. This one will go off the page because the reflection will be big enough, probably, that I will run out of paper. On this side, if I'm putting my lighthouse in, I will get more of ah, here's kissing. I will get more of my reflection, but I either need to stop it before I hit the end. What I do not want is this, so that it hits the end of the paper mm -hmm. and that's my reflection. We don't want anything ending on an end. That's kissing. So here, we wouldn't do that. that the reflection would be, this. Now, the, we, we've talked about reflections in other workshops. So the longer the reflection has to do with where I, the viewer, am sitting, as opposed to a shorter reflection, which means I'm higher up. Um, okay, so let's go back to our composition. So, uh, so now I need to fill in the rest of my horizon because We've got water back here and water back here. And now we've got these clouds. What do you think about the clouds? How should we put them in? To the left. On the diagonal. On a diagonal. Thank you. That's what I wanted. The, the clouds are in the photo more or less at the top. I want to angle them. And I could angle them either way. I could go this way and angle it, or I could go this way and angle it. It doesn't matter. Either that's way. What shows the move, that's what shows the movement, right? Yes, exactly. Either way, I want it to, I want the lighthouse to be intersecting, overlapping with that diagonal of clouds. So maybe I have my cloud line doing this. And then I would have, you know, cloud movement going this way. What's that diagonal line though? There's no, this? yeah. This is the dark clouds up here. This is the blue sky underneath it. Oh, 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 I see. So I rather than have it be more or less flat and horizontal, I'm angling it. We also could go the other way with it, you know, and angle it this way, you know, and have clouds come in this way, um, you know, and catch the top of the, of the uh, lighthouse. All right, what if we held our paper the other way? Here's our photo. We know where there's troubles. We got troubles in River City. How are we gonna fix our photo and make a picture? Where it is, needs to move. It needs to move to the right. It needs to move to the right. My first question, 
the first question in your head, where is my horizon? Where am I putting? In this case, it's the jetty and the water line or the pier and the water line, whatever that is. Where is it going? Is it going above or below my halfway point? Below. Below. Down. Yes. And how far out am I taking it? Mm. All right. So here, Below. I'm starting my line. Like how to, far like out? Longer? Yeah, because you know. Longer? You don't want to be in the halfway, right? There. Yeah, Stop. exactly. That's Thank good. you. I don't want to stop it halfway. Right. So let's stop it about here because that gives me the ability to put water back here, sort of peekaboo. And right. then here will be sort of that pure jetty thing here. And then whatever these things are in here. All right. Now I've got the lighthouse. Where does the lighthouse go? We can move it. It's, you know, it's Joan world and Robert world. We can move this. Where shall it go? Right quadrant. Right quadrant. I agree. How tall should we make it? We can make it as mm -hmm. tall as we want. Um, or could it go off the paper, you mean? If, if, if I wanted to do a painting that was focusing on details of the of the lighthouse, maybe it does go off the paper because that says what I'm focusing on. But in this case, I want to get the sky in also. So right, the clouds I are know really I, I'm, I'm, it's gonna, I'm gonna have the whole thing on. So how far over? You said right quadrant. I think that's a good answer. How far over? What do you think? No, 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 stop. More, <laughs> more right. More right, right? Yeah, that's right. good. That's, that's good. good. All right, let's do it. But and it I think that's... it loses the perspective. It seems like it lost its perspective by holding it this in in this direction. Well, I'm glad you're saying that because I was going to ask you what's the difference. Okay, it makes it much smaller. Let's put the water line in the back because we want to make sure we have the water. We want to make sure we've got some reflection happening. In this case, the reflection will go off the page because we're going vertical. Now, what do we do about those clouds? Left to right. Well, we're going to have an angle of clouds. Right. We either no. go this Other way, way or yeah, that, that way. way. That way. Who thinks that way? Robin. <laughs> Robin, who thinks the other way? Helen. <laughs> I think most people went this way. Okay, so let's try it this way. I'm a lefty. <laughs> You're a le I, I was just going to say that's my lefty. Yeah. Okay. Now here, look what I did. I was ending my clouds by my halfway point. So, uh, so I would actually want to bring my clouds up slightly or bring my clouds down to the pier, which I think I would even like better, bring that down. And then you would have, you know, your, your clouds come in. Now those clouds would also be in the reflection. Margie, but if you move the clouds down to the pier, wouldn't that be like kissing? Uh, no, because I'm going to let them just overlap. It would be okay. kissing if I have the pier and the cloud did something like that. It has to be like in one point ah, or right. in like one little area. If, if the cloud's coming in behind it, you know, and it's a bigger thing, we know oh, there's more clouds that happen below it. I see. I see. That's just overlap. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So how'd we all do with that? Ready to try some on your own? Let's see what time it is. Good. All right. Let's go to what I call final photo number one. I didn't know how to label all these things. 
All right, now you need a new sheet of paper. Oh, let's talk about the photo a minute. All right, what have we got in this photo? Busyness. A lot of busyness, <laughs> I agree. I agree, <coughs> what else? I like the road. I like the road too. All mm -hmm. right, what other elements do you like that you'd wanna keep? The tree. The tree, the tree is good. I agree, mm -hmm. what else? And a building, some sort of building. A building, yes. A building. Yes, some sort of building. The I, think, I didn't take this photo. I found it online. I think it's um, England somewhere. It has that look. Um, yes. The little fence. Say it again. The little fence. The little fence. I like that little fence mm -hmm. too, kid. I think it, mm -hmm. it gives you a little bit of a diagonal and like a little arrow mm -hmm. to follow. I think that's great. Um, I like the sky. The sky is good. The, sky. the shrubs on the left. The shrubs on the left. Good, good point, Marsha. The shrubs on the left, they're very interesting. Correct. So I those like of them are a little bloppy, but the shrubs like on the, the left are good. Okay. I like the chimneys. The chimneys. I do too. The chimneys are interesting. Against the um, horizon line. Yes, I agree with you. I, I think those are good. Okay. New piece of paper. And what I want you to do, let me get a nice sharp pencil. I want you to make two boxes. And first decision, are you going to make this horizontal or vertical? Vertical. Now, you're doing vertical, however you do it. Whatever you want is right for you. All right, so I'm gonna do, I'll do one of each. I was gonna say, can some of us do horizontal? Yes, you can. I might do horizontal. Do one of each. Now, I'm gonna put your halfway tick marks on both. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna walk you through the process, but I'm gonna have you do it. All right, so I want you to have two options. Now, this is what I would say to anyone who was, and this is what I do when I'm starting a painting. I'll make a few different options. All right. So your first question is, when I'm looking at this, where's my horizon? Where do you want your horizon? Above the It's a third of the way down, isn't it? No? Of the right. water at the sky. I would be above the second floor. It's above. Above the, the, the above, above the, the midpoint. All right. So if you want more of the picture of all this stuff, then where do I put my horizon? Above the midpoint. Oh, above, above, the mid above the midpoint. Yeah. Yeah. And if I want more of the sky and the tree branches and all that, I would have dropped it down. Okay. Now we've got the road. I think we all agreed that the road was pretty cool. Yes. Um, what is the problem with the road? It's dead center. It's pretty dead center. It's pretty close. All right, so what do I want to do with the road? That's that's my next issue. Move it. Move it. Where am I shifting it? Left. left. Shift it left? Okay, yeah. do I want to keep that little bend at the end? Yes. Well, it kind of has that S, right, that you like. <laughs> Say it again? It has the S. Kind of it the has S. the S, thank you. I was hoping somebody would say that. Yes, it has the S. <laughs> okay, four. so... This would be the center. We're sort of all inclined to put the road in and do that, but then I'm taking it right to the center, which no, I don't want to do. So what you should I do know. instead? You should end probably below the middle so that there's an end of the road. So that there's an end of the road below the middle? Yeah, below. below, below. Well, wherever the road ends, I'm then shifting my horizon. 
Well, still, no, because it looks, like, it, it looks like there's a, it's like it's on the hilltop. See, there's a horizon for the sky. Yeah, so there's the, stuff back here like that. Right. Yes. Oh, okay. So this is going to be my horizon. If I end the road here, I've now shifted my horizon down. Um, okay. so I, there, you have the right idea. You really do. But I think the answer is we have to shift the point it intersects with the horizon, either left or right. I oh. can't let it be here. Okay. So where am I going to shift it? Uh, right. Right, exactly. I'm going to put it over here. And I'll, there's another reason for doing that. So now I can do my angle this way. I want to make sure I'm not letting my road intersect here. Or I could bring it, if I do want the road more centered, I, I can do that, but I just have to be very weary of my midpoint that I don't intersect the midpoint. So this, the, the next thing is, what is this about? What is this picture about? What is the focus? And it could be anything. You could tell me uh, this light that you can barely see is the focus or to you or the fence is the focus. What do you want to have as your focus from this photo? The tree on the left. You could do the tree on the left. Absolutely. You can make anything your focus, depending on how you set up your painting. I'm going to take these houses and make it my focus. So if my road ends here on that point, I'm going to bring my focus right here. So I'm going to have, let's see, what is it? These cute little English style houses that'll be like this. So now I've got this as the focus. Now I have to make sure the way I painted I'm letting you know that this is the focus and there's other things we could do compositionally to let you know. So now I've got those nice tall trees that are next to it. I'm going to put those in and I'm going to let it just overlap a little bit. So let's add a couple of those. I see normally there's like a big bush that's in front of the houses. I'm, I'm cutting that one out. I don't need that. But I like that there's red vegetation that goes out to the road. So that I want right in here. Okay. Um, there's another house, another building on the other side of those bushes. Everybody see it right in here? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought that was all connected, actually. I think it's all connected, maybe. I don't know. I, can't I know. don't know. I, I think I'm going to put that in, but I've got to be very careful because look at where that is. So I'm going to kick that building up and let it come in here. I'm letting it go off the page. So technically it would look like this and then bring it down. Oh, it means I got to make my trees longer. Can't have them in midair. Mid and then this would end here. Okay. All right. So now we didn't put a roof line or a house line on my halfway point and I let, I let it go off the page. So technically you would only see, sorry for it, that the, the camera is trying to follow me. Uh, and you would only see this in the painting. Okay. Or couldn't well, you just extend the painting? I mean, or I could you extend just... the painting if I wanted more, but I don't know if I want more. Okay, now I've got this great big tree. Do we want to put it in or do we want to not put it in? Here's oh, yeah. the photo. Uh, what do you oh. think? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, All right. Is anyone not putting it in? 
Well, I, if you put I the like tree it. in, does that change the focus though? Because it's kind of ah, that who asked that? Me. <laughs> I, I, I did. Say, wait, say your name. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, Deb. I'm, I'm sorry, rather say it not. again. I'd Deb. rather put it ah, in. Perfect. It's a great question. Does it change it and does it become the focus? The largest element is not necessarily the focus. There's ways we paint the focus so that you know it's the focus. And, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. Okay. So but you um, want it for you. balance, no? We want, yeah, we do. You're exactly right. We want balance. We need something on this side because if I was only putting interesting things here, I got a big empty hole on this side mm -hmm. and we don't want that. So um, I can draw my tree and I can, I wanna make sure I'm not doing this and having a branch go right here mm -hmm. to my halfway point. I don't want that. So I'm gonna, I could let it go a little longer. Um, and then, uh, so we have our, our tree. Um, okay, now what else do we want to include in this? Some bushes. We need some bushes. That's we need some bushes. Um, and we need some bushes on both sides. So we could do, some bushes back here. We could do another one of these, which is in the photo. And we could have one of these round bushy things. Now, if I put something behind this tree, it has to show up on the other side. Don't let something disappear behind mm -hmm. an element. You always want it to at least peek out. That gives you like a visual balance. Yes. So you always want to have that. Now here, if you want to put, you know, something closer in, if you want to have some flowers, you can. There's two lamp posts in this, if you look really carefully. Oh, One is about here mm -hmm. and it's a little lamp post. Um, and the other is down here. And I think I want both of them. Why do I want both of them? Balance, 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 size. Look at one big, one little. Love it. Now, Kit, like the fence. Let's put that fence in. All right. And it's something like that. We'll let some grass happen that will let some light fall on that. And then if you want some bushes in the front, you can have some bushes or some flowers or whatever here. Now, this is a layout, a possible layout for the painting. The only other thing I would say to you is with your pencil, show me where the darks are. What's dark in this picture? And I'm just doing very dark, medium dark. That's it. And this is a map for your painting. You have a map. And that's always so useful when you start your good painting. Now, we also have the clouds up here. You can make this any weather you want. So this could be, you know, lighter clouds back up here. And I'd want to let it drop down behind my house. So how am I letting people know my house is my focus? Color. 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 Make lighter. Uh, well, part uh, of this. Yes. Very often, there are two things that happen with color on the focus. Number one is it's where the lightest light in the picture meets the darkest dark. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I would probably want to keep this side of the house very light. And remember I said I want some dark? 
right against this. And I would darken this side. So where the lightest light in the picture will meet some of the darkest dark. Have we, also, eliminated, have we eliminated that blue behind it in terms of the, the furthest? That, no, yeah. we can put the blue back here. And I'm glad is you that, brought that up. Okay. Is that water? If this yeah, is blue, is. let's say this is um, mountains or hillside or yeah. something back there. This could be like red or orange flowers here. Why do I care about blue and red and orange? Right. Compliments. compliments, exactly. Compliments. Very often you use compliments around your yeah. face because they visually sizzle. And I want the sizzle by my focus. Also, we're gonna, this is watercolor. We're gonna use hard and soft edges. A focus is almost always hard edged. So we are given so many clues that this is the focus. Plus we're going to have those diagonals, those arrows, those visual arrows, the fence, the angle of the fence goes right to my focus. The longest branch here is going to point to my house focus what i whatever i do here with the with the bushes maybe i have a few little things sticking up and it's going to point up here to the focus i'm going to have some uh uh, uh marks in the dirt road here and they will point up to the focus so you have these subtle visual arrows that are all taking you here You want to try it vertically now? Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's do it again. All right, who is where are you putting your your uh, your horizon? Margie, or, I have a really yeah, go ahead, Joan. I have a really fundamental question. Go ahead. Um, when we did it horizontally. I considered the place where the sky and the water met as the horizon line. Was um, that wrong? That is, yeah. Uh, the horizon line is where the land, the, the land you're standing on leaves ends. Ah. So this so it's really at the end of the road. It's the end of the road. It's this line. Great. This line. is just the back of the, it's a, it's a very good question, Joan, and everybody asks it, and it's important. So I'm glad you did ask it. This is the horizon line right here. And oh, that's okay, always you. important. Um, that's always important. So where am I putting my horizon? It's now a vertical painting. So how am I gonna do it? I've got the same elements. I could decide oh. to move them or to shift them or eliminate them. What do we think? I think it needs to be above the midpoint again. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had put my horizon down here, what happens to my painting? It's all sky. It's, it's all so sky, weird. thank you. And I, everything I, gets squished in. In yeah, front, which means my little house is here and my, you know, I, I'll end up with a whole lot of sky up here. And um, not enough room for what you want to do. And not enough room element. for what I want to do. Okay, so let's see, see being, painting is all about being smart. You guys are so smart. Okay, so here's my halfway. And now I'm going to put my horizon here. Okay. So now the next question is about the road. Last time we took the focus where the road ended, the road ended right where the houses started. Is that what we're doing here? How about if anyone the think? road goes around the house? Because it's so sweet. The road could go around the house. 
there's no question. Here's the halfway point on the horizon. So I know I've got to avoid it. Um, I could have my road end over here. I could have my house be over here. Absolutely. And do that. Should we see if that works? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let's bring the road out. And I still want to do that, that soft S. In this case, the road's going to have to come off more to the edge of the paper, but that's okay. I'm fine with that. All right. And now we're going to have our house here, or houses, whatever this is. Okay, I want my little red flowers in the front again. I definitely want these trees um, because I want to frame the house. And you're going to see this a lot, especially if it's a white house or a, a house that um, uh, uh, is going to have some negative painting. You may want to make sure you've got uh, vegetation. I do this all the time uh, behind roofs that are light colored roofs um, because it's a way of setting it off and, and we want that. Okay, now we had that other house, that smaller house here in the picture. What happens to it here? I, you can, I'm I think you can hint at it. You think I should hint at it? Let it be well, no, partly I, there? I should I take it out? Crap. What do you think? There's hardly any room, I think, for it, but I don't I think it's necessary. There's not much room. Now, I could move it. I could put it down here. Does anybody like that? No. Mm -mm. No, I don't either. I, don't I, don't, I could put it on the other side of the road. Jane, I have a question about well, this road. Go you ahead. Took, you took the road over to the left. Correct. Why didn't you widen it out? On, on the bottom as it shows um, because I was afraid I was going to hit the halfway point. But what if, if you if you widened it out more? Say it again, Marsha. What if you widened it out more to be on the I could. Side? I absolutely okay. could. I no. could widen it out much more. And these right. are options that will work. As long as you don't divide it, you could do that. You just want to make sure that you're not hitting this point. So right. yes, you could do that. Absolutely. In, in fact, I think I like that better yeah, than what I, I had. That's right. is a good suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So now I'm going to make my tree a little bigger because I want it taller than my roof. Um, okay. So maybe I take that house out of this one, but I have a lot of space here and I've got to deal with this. Do I put the big tree in? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right, is there anybody who thinks the big tree should not go in if it's vertical? You could put it, you need something there. You need something to balance it. But you need yeah. something to balance it. That's exactly right. But it does not have to be the big tree. I yeah, it could be the lap post. It or it could be, be the other building that's sort of could be next the other to the building. tree. Exactly. Right. I could have another house here. I could move it and let it come here. I could put more of these trees back here behind it. Like this. Let's say we have some bushes in front of it and some flowers, you know, on this side. And our lamppost, we love our lamppost. Now, if I make my lamppost here and go in front of my house over here, right? And I have my little lamppost here. Um, how do you know that this is not the focus, but this is? What have I done? that tells you that this is the focus, but this is not. You put the lamppost in front of it? Yes, it, that's exactly right. Usually when I'm doing a focus, 
I'm not going to obscure it too much. I'm only going to give it edges, overlap it like I did with this tree. But if I were going to do like big buildings or big, big bushes rather, I, I really probably would not start blocking up too much of my house. If I start doing that, you know, I'm, I'm losing my focus. I'm saying something else. So number one is this lamppost is now kind of taking up a lot of space over this house. Number one. Number two, it's, you know, a whole lot of it isn't even on the page. Now, it doesn't mean that something that's only partially shown can't be a focus. It can. But in this case, so much of it is off the page, you know, and so many details are off the page. Maybe I'll put a, I could get a little door in or something, but that's about it. Um, the other thing is all my visual arrows are going to end up here, not here. So here where I'm going to put flowers in, I'm going to have some overlap the road and point up here. I want visual arrows going up the road. So the car, the car marks, um, we've got the, I definitely want that little fence in. Kit's fence is going in. So that's bringing me in. Um, let's see, I'm gonna put the red flowers here. Maybe I'll put uh, some, some uh, colored <coughs> flowers in here. So now I'm surrounding it by color and by dark. It's light on this side. We could have dark to this side. So the light is showing here, which I like. And then all I need to do is figure out this corner. What should we do for the corner? Who has an idea? Bush. We could do a bush. A bush is fine. Um, we could do uh, uh, we could do like a the bush. beginning of a farm, like of rows. Could be rows of some kind of farm or something. We could do we could do that. We could put uh, like like uh, farming stuff. We could put a, 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 a garden yeah, or a like mailbox. A, mm -hmm. I, I, lately, I've been doing mailboxes, which is really <laughs> kind of fun. Um, even though it's not near the house, but you could have a <laughs> you know a mailbox hanging over or sign welcome to whatever. Um, uh, you could do something like that. Um, um, actually, we have enough space for both. Um, okay, so what I, and then we could have a little bit of something behind here. So it looks like the world doesn't end at the road. Um, so what I want you to do, we just took that photo and looked at it two different ways, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, if you feel ready, let's put, you can put one of them on your good paper. If you want to say, I, I want to do it one way or the other. If you want to try this exercise for yourself without me, you know, taking you through it, I gave you two more photographs. So you could take one of these two. This is the hardest one, the one with the, the people. Right. Um, uh, but I, I love that photograph. I, I, I can't wait to play with it. But I gave you these two. Um, so you could work up these two if you want. You could have combined things if you want. You could take some of these people and put them going down the road if you want. I want you to make a composition on your good paper. If you're more comfortable doing it from what we just did, then use one of these and see how it works on your paper. And that means when you put it on your paper, you're going to do the same kind of thing. Lightly put in your tick marks. First, you're gonna decide which way am I holding it, right? Am I gonna do this one or this one? Either way, then you will 
decide, well, where is my horizon? Where is my focus? How am I drawing the road? How am I going to put in those houses? Right? Step mm -hmm. by step. That is what we did. And that's what I want you guys to do. So, um, so let's assume you've done that. I actually started drawing one in, but, um, uh, but I haven't painted it yet. I didn't know if we would get to the painting part. Now, so the question is, let's say you have your drawing because I want you to actually paint it. The question is, what do you do when you finish your drawing? All right. So this oh, is Margie. gonna be Cricket Margie sitting on your shoulder. And I'm going to whisper in your ear and I'm going to say, okay, what's next? What do you do? What's Sky. the first thing you do? You have a drawing. It's a rough drawing. Actually, this drawing's not even done. It's a rough drawing. What, what's next? Assuming it's finished. Sky? Uh, no. The first thing before you even paint, oh. take out lines you don't oh, need. That's right. Your right. halfway tick marks, any line that goes through something like the tree, because once you paint over them, you may or may not get them back. Mm -hmm. Not all lines will erase with paint over it, depending on how you did it. So let's make sure erase what you don't need. OK, that's number one. Also, this is the point that you're going to check things. Is the focus going to work for you? Is it in a place that works? Or is it now, whoops, we put it in the center. And now we've got to move it. Um, is, your, is this what you wanted to do? I mean, I've, I've started paintings and I've done the drawing and then I put it up and I said, oh, I didn't think I was painting this. I thought I was painting the tree, you know, and, and lo and behold, I did it. So then the question is, is that what I want? Do I want to change my drawing or have I gone in a different direction? Um, okay, now the next thing is, let's say I have my drawing. I'm happy with where my focus is going to be. The next thing, before you start the painting, you are the director. You get to cast the show. The show are the colors. So you get to pick the stars of your show. Who's going to be the star? Who's going to be the co-stars? Who is the supporting cast? Now, many of you took my other workshops and we made donuts. Remember our donuts where we looked at what colors look like when they're next to each other? That's what you would do next. So you would look at your drawing. You'd say, okay, the stars of my show. Um, maybe I want this to be um, uh, uh, a, a calm painting, an exciting painting. Uh, a, uh, well, it's not disorienting, but just based on the subject. So I would do a couple donuts and try only the primary colors. Try a yellow, try a blue, try a red, and then see how they look. Do you like how they look? Because these are what your mixes are going to be. Mm -hmm. And then if you like these, but you're not sure this is too bright, maybe I switch this up with a different yellow and then try a donut again. And then, so then you'll know your main colors are going to be maybe a Lizarin, Ultramarine, and Gamboge. And I'm just pulling that out of my head. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't use other colors. It just means those are your main colors. You have your whole palette you can use. But you want to know when you're mixing your main things, if you keep going back to your three stars of the show, all the pieces will weave together. You will have an integrated painting. All right, and then you start. So the question is, where do you start? You did your donuts, where do you start? Well, sometimes 
here's my tape. Sometimes I want to raise my board so that anything I paint, I have a little bit of gravity that's going to pull it down. So if I'm doing the sky or I'm doing vegetation, I may want a little bit of gravity. So where do I start painting? Any thoughts? I think Robin said sky originally. And sometimes we do. Sometimes we start at the top and we paint our way down. Sometimes we start on our focus and we paint our way out. Or sometimes we start with what's in the front and we paint our way back. Um, because watercolor, unlike acrylic or oil, um, is going to be, it has a lot of transparency. So if I put some of this in first, but I want to put something over it, it will show. And, and if I want something that's going to be over it, I, I've got to paint what's on top first. Do um, we want to go from light to dark? Sometimes we, it, uh, we don't do that as much, Robert, but that's a very good question because I know you do that in other mediums. Um, more, the, the thought is you want to get down all the, you want to get down all the color, like a good base of color over the whole thing. Don't fuss, even if you're going to paint your, your focus first. Don't fuss and, and finish it. We want to get all the pieces in. I call blocking in the painting. Block in your painting. And you don't need it to be dark, dark, dark yet. We will darken on the second go round. Think of it as you have three go rounds. You're yeah, going yeah. to put in your medium tones, your light tones. You want to get those in. You want to also know what you're leaving white. You want to know that before you, before you start painting. So that here, I know this is going to be white, this side of the building. I'm going to have some very lights here where the sun is going to hit it. And this is going to be fairly light at this part of the road. And I'm doing that so that I'm getting that movement, that, that uh, visual pathway. Um, and obviously the interiors of the lights, I'm, I'm not going to paint. Um, so first round, block in those colors. Second round, now I'm going to put in the darks and I'm going to um, uh, darken anything that has to be darkened. So, and, and I don't mean dark color, I mean lots of value, lots of paint. So even if it's a, a pink or a yellow, um, maybe this, because it's up in the front, has a lot of paint on it. Um, you know, this is gonna have the reds. These are gonna be fairly subtle. They're in the background back here, then I've got my tree. And then third round are the details. This is where you take out the little brushes. No little brushes until the last round. And don't overpaint it. What are colors that meant to be overpainted? You know, so what do we think guys? Did I, did I scare everyone? Oh yeah, I'm mm what, -hmm. yeah. Margie, what do you really mean? Or can you amplify what you mean by blocking in the color by blocking in the color yeah, yeah. uh okay I, I i thought you might ask that okay <laughs> of course so when you do that always start with a big brush okay now i didn't play with my colors i didn't finish my drawing okay so let's say uh i'm going to use ultra in my sky and I'm gonna do a wash first and get some of this sky in. All right, let's see, am I still on camera? All right, there we go. All right, um, and I'll use a little cobalt. Um, this sky in the photo is fairly overcast. If you wanna do that, 
you can either add a little bit of a brown um, into this and that will slate gray your blues. Um, if you add too much, you're gonna end up with a storm, like real storm clouds, which I don't think I want storm clouds. I just want a little overcast. Okay, now we're gonna treat this like a wash. So I am going to take a brush and just wet my sky. Now, when I wet my sky, I'm gonna carve around here. I'm gonna do it quickly. Okay, it's gonna be the fastest picture I've ever painted. All right, <laughs> all right. And I am just blocking in my sky. All right, a little more color, a little more gray. Come here, you, there we go. A little more, yeah, good, okay. Okay, so here's my, my, my sky. And because I'm, it was wet and because it's raised, you can start to see some of this running, which I love. You can encourage it by hitting it, which is amazing. That's just paper and it makes that noise. And you get these wonderful blendy lines. Okay. So next, I would start blocking in some of the vegetation. Now, I know I used ultramarine and cobalt already. Those are gonna be the beginnings of my mixes for the vegetation. So I, I, I'm not gonna do all of it, but um, here, we'll do some of it. Um, all right, let's get it a little greener than that. I don't want it too gray. All right. All right. So now I have the vegetation behind the tree. I have these. So I'm going to start blocking in. And when I block in, I don't want to do it individually. I want to let it go like we did with our washes from tree to tree. We're just going to let the color blend. If you can, let it blend on the paper. So here, now I'm dropping in blue over here. You can see how wet it is. I, I paint mm -hmm. very, very wet. Um, and you could drop in you know, if I want this lighter, I'm just dropping some yellows on it and let it blend on the paper. This one, maybe I'm going to I'll pull this, put some yellows in there, and then drop in this. So you could see, now remember, it has to show up on the other side of my tree. Um, and you could see all I'm doing is Locking it in. Um, how it's do I much, want to treat it? It's much clearer seeing you do it than just than hearing, hearing it. Word. Yeah. Now the ones back here, I'm going to rely heavily into the blues, the blue greens, more because that's going to show depth. Whenever you're using blues. Blues give depth. And I'll let my tree, um, some of it I will uh, go around in other branches. I'll just do that. And we'll do it this way. And you can see all I'm doing is dropping it. In. And maybe we'll pop a little yellow over here. and let it mix on there. Let's put a little more blue in it. Come here, blue, there you go. You can see how wet I'm painting. Um, and as long as it's wet, I can play with it. I can drop in more color, I can, decide, you know what, I'm really gonna go for a real punch here. I'm putting a drop of fallow in. I can do that if it's wet. 
once it starts drying, I have to get out of Dodge. So, um, uh, and over here, if I were, you know, just playing with it, maybe I would drop in, you know, the reds over here. I'll come back and play with that. Margie, what red do you use? Uh, I think I just grabbed my warm red, which right now is Scarlet Lake. Okay. Yeah. I have two warm reds on my palette. That one's Scarlet Lake. This is a Windsor red, um, which is that. Oh, oh, here. I did. It's much brighter. It's that, um, which I also like. Um, and, you know, and then you know, you, you would uh, you can see because these are, I'm putting in the dark around the house. All of a sudden the house is starting to show more. Mm -hmm. So this, this is what I mean by blocking it in. And it's just, laying it out. The road is going to be a light brownish tone. I'm going to keep some of it open, some of it brown, but, and I'll go back and put in the details, but at least I have the color in it. Um, this is going to be a place where some light is hitting the grass. So I need that to be a fairly yellowy green, but I don't want it to be too summery or too light because we didn't make that kind of sky. So I have to have something like this. I can give it a little hit of gamboge, which always looks great, you know, when light is hitting something. Um, and what yellows, what yellows do you use, Margie? That's gamboge. Yeah. My, and what are, my what are go to the yellows? yellows are gamboge for a warm yellow and aurelian for my cool yellow. Um, and I don't think I used any aurelian in this yet. And are or they are they yeah. transparent? They're both transparent. I I work almost always transparent. The only um, opaque colors I use occasionally, Naples, Cerulean, which is semi-transparent. Um, and then you could decide what you want to do with your house. You know, maybe I, I don't know if the, oh, the roof should be a reddish. Um, so maybe I'll do a burnt sienna mix here for the roof. And I'm doing hard edge that's going to catch your eye. And if you want to put the little chimneys in, we can. You know, something like that. This will catch your eye. I will darken this side when that dries so that we know where the light is hitting. Or I could darken this side and keep that one light. Either way. And then when we go back in, for the next round, now I would darken places in the bushes. I would put some, you know, identify places where there's flowers or, you know, things I want to put in. But this is blocking in the painting, getting it down, the whole thing, before you start fussing on one little area. You don't want to fuss on one little area. Okay. Margie, are you yes. going, so first of all, are you going to finish this painting or would you finish it for us? Yes. For our benefit? I can and finish it and send it to you. Yeah. And number two, could you send it by any chance in stages? So obviously we've oh, all joined. That's, that's really point. interesting. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, since I didn't quite finish the drawing, I may start it again because now I'm painting on something that was unfinished and I'm going to play around with it. But um, yeah, I, I, that's a good idea, Joan. I, I hadn't thought of that. Much. Yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Let me come off of this and go back here. All right. Now, Andy, hi guys. Um, any other questions from everybody? <sighs> it's, it's an um, only yeah, actually, could could you take a moment and looking at the two remaining um, photograph, photographs or whatever they are that we did not deal with at all? Right. Could you just clarify where I should have identified the horizon in oh, the blue sure. and green in that one and in the uh, okay scene? Okay, so on this one, where do you think the horizon is? Okay. Where would people put it? Bob Center. Bob Center, yeah. Where the water ends and the land back here begins. Oh, that I guessed right. <laughs> you guessed right. You did it. Okay. okay. So that, that this one, you can right. hardly see it. The horizon would be you see it in the, the middle of the street. Yeah. And it's got a lot of perspective. So it dri you know, your eye drives straight mm -hmm. down there. So, but it's not the big building smack no. in the center. No. It's the it's the street below it's that. The end of the street. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. That's Thank where the horizon so is. Much. Yeah. I, I like this because I, I thought it had some good elements. What other questions, guys? I want you to be able to do this. I just want to ask you a technical question if I can. What sure, brush Robert, were you ahead. just using? Say it again. I didn't hear. What brush oh. are you using? What brand? What? Yes. Okay. It, it's See, holding I, a very... I, I love these brushes. There's two brushes that I'm absolutely in love with. Um, the one I've, I've been using now is called Silver Black Velvet. Um, this is a number 12. And I have painted whole paintings with this because it's so good for holding big amounts of paint. And the point, I don't know if you could see That's this amazing. point. Uh, it's it a is great an point. amazing yeah. point. What uh, brand silver is black it? velvet. I have three of them in different sizes, and I love these brushes. You can get those and that, anywhere. That's Cheap, Cheap Joe's. Cheap Joe's has them. Um, Dick Blick has them. Um, uh, uh, Jerry's Artorano has them. Um. The other mm -hmm. brushes that I am now in love with are a little harder to get and you have to order them. They're, they come out of England and these are the rosemary brushes. <clears throat> and um, they're wonderful. They are just- Who is the, uh, who's the manufacturer of the silver black velvet? Uh, and they're, the silver black velvet are much cheaper too, by the way. Who is the um, manufacturer though? Yeah, that's a good question. What are they made of? Are they synthetic? They're synthetic. synthetic. It is synthetic. The rosemary has some uh, natural sable, um, but these are, I don't know who makes it. You, you, if you look up, if you look up silver black velvet, okay. you will get, you will get this. And okay. they Thank are you. not, they are not, uh, they're not expensive brushes. They're, they're pretty modern. It's just, it's, it held such a, a sharp point. I couldn't oh believe my it. God. Maybe. And that's a number 12. This is the number yeah. 16. And you're using it in what sizes now? This oh. one here, I'll switch cameras. This is the number 16. So it's, it's a pretty big boy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here, let me go to this again. Um, and if I wanted to, here, I'll just grab some brown real quick. Um, so if I wanted to just do, you know, some tree branches, whoops. You know, I can, you know, this is a number 16, amazing. You know, which is pretty wow. amazing. And I, I probably, so you could go fat and then come up on it. Um, 
I, I really think it's an amazing brush. Uh, you know, and then while it's wet, you can drop in, you know, more of the grays if you want, or more of the, the other colors. But when you're, I, I love a good point. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. They make a flat, but the flat brush, um, I, I like a different one for flat. And I can show you that if you're, if you're interested. Um, Margie? Yes. From way back in the day, yes. I had pro art and um, from Cheap Joe's, yeah, called Miller's Golden Fleet. Yeah, that, that's not bad. Are you happy with it? Um, I think I like the Miller's. I'm not so sure about these pro art. Yeah, um, pro art. I I know it's it's a good beginner brush. It's a good beginner brush. Um, if you so wanted to upgrade, yeah. The Millers are fine. That's Joe yeah. Miller, who's Cheap Joe. Um, yeah, okay. And the Millers are fine. If you're interested in the flats, there's two that I like. One is made by Sterling Edwards, and you can get it on his website. Um, uh, and it's synthetic. It's what I care about is a good chisel edge. I want a really good chisel edge. Sterling's brush is about eight bucks, which is not bad. This is my favorite one inch. It, it is just yummy. It's a scepter gold. It's um, sable and synthetic. It's made by Windsor Newton um, from England, but it's made only for cheap Joes. You can't get it anywhere else but cheap Joes. It is the best chiseled edge I, I and the size it, on I that it till there. say it again the, the size this is a one, one inch. inch one inch okay um i'll show you how great this chiseled edge is here let's grab a piece of practice paper again here enlarge it um spotlight okay here we go all right so, all right, so here it is going flat. And then the chiseled edge is like amazing. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just terrific. So, you know, you can do all kinds of things with it. Um, Bridget, what's the name of it again, please? It's called a Scepter Gold 2, S-C-E-P-T-R-E. -E. Um, so you can see, I mean, how really chiseled this edge goes. Wow. Um, and it's made for Windsor, Windsor and Newton makes it with Cheap Joes. I, it's only available at Cheap Joes. It's Thank about you. 25 bucks. So it's, it's sable and synthetic. It's a combination. It is great. I have a couple of these, but I literally use them till they, till they die. This one's already taped. Um, um, <laughs> and, and anytime they're on sale, I buy it. There's another one that I also buy. If, if, you're, ever in the, if you're ever looking for a, a fat brush, this is a two inch. And mm -hmm. the two inch, I like the sky flow. This is Robert Simmons. So you can see I, I use it until it until it's gone. Here's a newer one um, that's in better shape, but at least, you know, um, but uh, these I buy also when they're on sale. So this is the two inch sky flow, but, um, but that does not have a good chiseled edge, but I don't need a two inch to have a good chiseled edge. For my two inch, I want to know it's going to hold. Uh, it's going to hold everything very well. That's what I care about. Whoops, forgot to change the camera. Um, yeah, Margie, good question, Robert. Thank you for that. I want to say thank you. I'm going to have to depart. Oh, we yeah. all do. I I yeah. run over, and I'm <laughs> sorry for that. All right, I will send you the link. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Thank I guess you. I have homework. Thank you. Thank you. All Thanks right. So much. Thank you.
Everybody. Hey, hi. Do well. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Margie. Bye-bye. Bye. How do we cut off? Oh, leave.